So who am I? Uh, I'm Vinayak Mehta uh, from Bangalore, India. Uh, I'm the author and maintainer of uh, Camelot and Excalibur, uh, the two Python packages that this talk is about. During the day, I work as a data engineer at Grofers, where I build tools and services that help uh, stakeholders in the system to take data-driven decisions uh, for the business. And uh, we deliver 25 million orders uh, to 16 uh, cities, and we, uh, that number is growing every month. So, and uh, like we are hiring across roles at both our offices in Gurgaon and Bangalore. So, uh, like if you want to know more about that, you can catch us uh, at the poster presentation that is happening at 4:15. I'm also an organizer at PyData Bangalore. Uh, we just started out in June this year, and uh, we are doing like monthly meetups. Uh, uh, this month our meetup is on October 19th. So if you're like in and around Bangalore, just consider submitting a talk by opening an issue on that GitHub repo. So what is this talk about? I'm here to talk about how you can extract tables from PDFs very easily. I believe each one of us has encountered a PDF at some point in our lives, like resumes or uh, research papers. A PDF stands for the Portable Document Format. So this is uh, a high-level overview of the talk. I'll briefly go through the history of the format. I'll touch upon some basic problems I uh, faced while extracting tables from a PDF file, then demonstrate how you can use Camelot and Excalibur to do that. And then uh, we'll finally discuss the roadmap of these projects and maybe uh, do a Q&A if we have some time. And yeah, there'll be some Python fun facts. So <laughs> gear yourself. Uh, so let's begin with one. Why is Python called Python? Anyone? Yeah, correct. So while he began implementing the language, Guido Van Rossum was also reading the published uh, scripts from Monty Python's Holy Grail, which is a BBC comedy series from the 70s. He wanted a name uh, that was short, unique, and slightly mysterious. And thus we have Python. You know, there's uh, a thing that keeps me up at night. So, like, what if it was called Monty Kangaroo's Flying Circus? What, uh, like, I wonder how history would have shaped. Uh, like, we might have been at CanCon. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> let's get back to the topic at hand. Um, so, PDF was born out of the Camelot project almost 30 years ago. This is a six-page a uh, memo by Jay Warnock, the co-founder of Adobe, uh, where he gives an outline, outline of the Camelot project. He describes the problems people were facing at the time to visualize uh, material between different uh, computer systems. Uh, so th the, uh, the first line is kind of like a high-level summary of that paper. The goal was to make documents that look the same of an, on any operating system uh, you're using to look at them and should print the same on any printer, like as the author intended. It was created out of a subset of PostScript, which was a page description language, which is a page description language, which had already solved this view and print anywhere problem. Uh, PSN itself is quite broad, uh, like a programming language in itself. Uh, in PDF, uh, or a PDF is designed to be self-contained. It encapsulates components uh, required to render a document on different systems, which include text, fonts, uh, vector graphics, and raster images. All these components travel with the document wherever it goes. Some more history about the PDF. It was created in the early 90s by Adobe. It predates the World Wide Web in HTML. It was a proprietary format initially, but uh, was released as an ISO standard in 2006. So at a very high level, a PDF contains instructions to place the components that I just mentioned at x, y coordinates relative to the bottom left corner of a page. So like, think of that bottom left corner as uh, an uh, origin on a 2D plane, which means that words are simulated by placing some characters closer together, and sentences are simulated by placing words relatively far apart. So in this case, uh, in quick, Q and U would be like somewhat closer, and when the next word begins, K and B would be placed somewhat apart. So, how are tables simulated? By just placing words uh, like in lines, like they would appear in a spreadsheet, a spreadsheet in reading order. 
basically they just look like tables uh, there's no information internally uh, about whether a column is a column or a row is a row or what relationships are there between cells this drawback of pdf having no internal representation of a table structure makes it difficult to extract tables for analysis uh, sadly a lot of open data is released as uh, pdfs like uh, in millions of pdfs possibly billions of pdfs a for, in, like a format that wasn't designed for tabular data in the first place a better format to store tabular data is the csv which stores uh, tabular data in plain text each line of the file is a table row and each row consists of one or more columns separated by commas and hence comma separated values which is its full form or json csv and json files can be directly read into uh, like an analyzable table structure using maybe pandas or a lot of other open source tools now let's go back to uh, tables inside inside pdfs if you ever try to copy paste a table from a pdf uh, you might have found it that it's not very easy to do uh, like most of the times you have to copy each cell one by one and paste it into a text editor or maybe excel In 2016 I was working on scraping open data uh, from PDFs for a startup. These are some of the PDF tables that I worked with. Like when an organization uh, wants to release open data, it comes up with a bizarre and colorful table format. There's no set standard. Try to imagine copy pasting data from hundreds of different uh, different of PDFs and with hundreds of pages. Uh, man that's not scalable. But there should be a better way to get uh, a table out of PDF, right? Without copy pasting each cell. Uh, indeed, there are a bunch of open source tools. Oh, yeah, indeed, there are a bunch of open source PDF table extraction uh, tools. Uh, Tabula is the first one that I tried. Uh, it, uh, it works really well. Sometimes it has a nice interface. It's uh, Java based. Then there's PDF Plumber, which is Python based and open source. PDF Tables, which was originally open source, uh, but now it's proprietary. PDF Table Extract, which is unfortunately no longer maintained. And there are various other uh, free and paid online services. Uh, Small PDF is the one that I tried. Problems with existing tools. Uh, let's take this PDF for example. Uh, this is a weekly, weekly disease outbreak report uh, released by the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare in the uh, Government of India. It contains weekly data about the number of cases and deaths uh, for, reported for various diseases, diseases in uh, Indian districts, uh, with a comment column on like what action was taken to prevent that uh, for that outbreak. looks like a very easy table to extract right uh, it has clearly defined lines in just as seven rows and 10 columns uh, well this is the output when you pass it through tabula uh, you can see like the table uh, he headers are uh, in different rows and the columns column is all over the place this is the output of pdf tables uh, they have a, a website where you can upload your pdf and then download the extracted output it works slightly better but it uh, costs money when these tools fail you're just left with a badly extracted table which you now have to clean up uh, adding adding extra time between the data and its analysis and there's no possibility to get even like 80 or 90% uh, of the table out nicely by tweaking uh, some knobs or some parameters so like maybe your data cleaning time is shorter uh, one solution that i tried when these tools didn't work was pdf to text which is been installed in most linux systems under popular utils uh, this is a sample pdf table that i created using latex you can use pdf to text like this pdf to text file name and you can use the hyphen layout option which will extract all the text from your pdf using uh, and preserve the layout uh, using white, uh, white spaces but it has it, its own set of problems uh, first of all the output is a, output is a text file and you have to ha have a post extraction step where you have to make sense of the underlying data table maybe using complex regular expressions uh, which is expensive and time time consuming imagine having a github repository uh, containing hundreds of uh, scripts for different types of pdf tables uh, that is not uh, neither scalable and uh, nor maintainable Um, to overcome some of the problems of not having a tool that gives you more control over the table extraction process by being configurable and de developer friendly i worked on developing and open sourcing camelot at social corps 
Uh, and I designed this logo, taking some inspiration from SciPy and AstroPy. You can see the snake <laughs> around a table. Uh, well, why Camelot? Uh, because it works well, out of, uh, works well out of the box, pretty much, for most cases. And it auto-detects the way the table is without you ha having to do anything. For complex one, there's some table extraction parameters that you can use. Um, they are uh, like, for example, you can say that that's not a single column that you recognize. That's actually five different columns that these offsets. A feature that a lot of users, li uh, users like is visual debugging using matplotlib, uh, which helps you uh, visualize all the components in, uh, that the library found on the PDF page. Uh, and uh, like those uh, visualizations can help you tweak uh, these different options that a library provides to get a better output. It also exports to uh, uh, all the useful formats like CSV, JSON, Excel, HTML, and even Pandas data frames. So you can directly extract a table out of a PDF and use it in your data analysis workflows. And it's written in our favorite programming language. It's MIT licensed, and it has excellent documentation. Uh, let's do a short demo here. So this is a Jupyter no notebook which I've written. Uh, oops. Is it, uh, can in, everyone view it? Can everyone view the code? Okay. okay I'll still make it larger. So all you have to do is import Camelot. Uh, then you uh, do camelot.read PDF. This is, uh, it has an API that is similar to pandas where you do read CSV or read HTML. You pass in your file name and you get, oh, wait, yeah. And you get a table list object. So uh, the, the repo, uh, they're like, uh, is showing you that it found one table uh, on the PDF page. And this is uh, the PDF page that I showed earlier. Oops, yeah, this one. Oh, it's also on the next slide. So you can access that in attribute using a tables.in. You can access each table within a table list using the uh, indices. So if you do a tables zero, it will show the shape of that table, which is your seven rows and 10 columns that are actually present on the page. You can get a parsing report uh, of uh, how the extraction process was uh, handled. So if it's a good accuracy, then your table was found, like your table would, uh, was extracted nicely. Oops, let me scroll down. Then you can access the table data frame uh, using a table 0.df. And it's the same table that was found on the PDF page, uh, like this. After that, you can export your whole table list uh, into CSVs. So if you do an export table.csv, and uh, you'll see that uh, since one table was found on only one page, it exported one CSV. Then you can plot all the components that were found on a PDF page. For example, the text or the grid that uh, the library detected, uh, the table boundaries that were detected, the lines that were detected, in the line intersections that were detected. So like maybe if you didn't see enough intersections, you could tweak some parameters to get more intersections, which would, mean, uh, which, uh, would signify that your table was extracted nicely and it was recognized nicely. Uh, cool, uh, let's go back to the demo. Oh, the presentation, oh wait. So uh, also the documentation is, is on read the docs. So if you go to the advanced use it section, you uh, can see all the parameters that the library gives you. And uh, like it, all of these parameters have illustrated examples so that it's easy for uh, you to understand. Cool. So this is a slide I added uh, just in case the demo didn't work. Uh, Camelot also comes with a command line interface, uh, which you can uh, see by doing camelot help on your shell. The easiest way to install Camelot is using Conda, uh, where you do just a Conda install Camelot pi and you specify the channel, which is Conda Forge. Using pip, uh, you'll have to first install the dependencies, which are TK and GoScript, and then you can simply do a pip install Camelot pi CV. CV because uh, that is the most basic flavor that you want. It also installs OpenCV on your system, which is used to recognize lines on a page. So how it works? It is built on top of PDF Miner, which is 
uh, an awesome program, uh, a Python library that gives you all the components uh, from a PDF page, and they coordinate. There are two parsing flavors, Lattice and Stream, which uh, the names of which were inspired from Tabula. Lattice looks for lines on a page by first converting the page into an image using GoScript and then using OpenCV to get the uh, 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 to identify the lines on a, on that image. And Stream looks for white spaces and alignment, uh, uh, the text alignment, for example, left, right, and center to uh, guess columns on a page. And uh, there's a disclaimer, the library only works with text-based PDFs right now and not uh, scanned images and documents. So fun facts ahead. Uh, as you can already guess, uh, like you must be wondering why it's called Camelot. So Camelot is a castle in Monty Python in the Holy Grail. And it's uh, in the Arthurian legend depicted in, uh, um, like in the film. Oh, wait. And another fun fact, the PyPI was initially called the cheese shop based on the Monty Python cheese shop sketch. Uh, but let's get this back to the presentation. But what if you don't want to write code? Camelot comes with a web interface called Excalibur. Oh, wait. You can use a web interface. You just do Excalibur web server on your terminal, which I'll just do. Cool, it's running. I'll go to localhost 5000. Uh, so here you can upload your PDF. Let's upload the first PDF. Uh, you can specify the page numbers that you want to parse. Uh, by default, it'll take the first page. And Excalibur is async by design, so uh, you'll have to wait for the page to appear. Now you can auto-detect tables that the library recognized, or uh, you can uh, select the flavor that you want. In this case, we want Lattice because it's a table with lines, and we just click on View and Download Data. Again, you'll have to refresh because it, because it starts a background job that parses your PDF page. Uh, so we can see the PDF page was parsed nicely, and uh, now you can download it in any format that you want. Um, by Excalibur, you, uh, it's a web interface, so it offers assisted extraction. It's easier than a Python library. Uh, it, since like, it is installed on your machine, your data is, stays on your machine, it never goes out. And uh, like, it's uh, configurable with Celery for parallel workloads. Again, you can install Excalibur using pip uh, after installing the dependencies, which are TK and GoScript. Another fun fact sign. That's the last one, I swear. Or is it? You must be wondering why it's called Excalibur. It's named after the legendary sword of King Arthur. In another fun fact, the metasyntactic variables in the Python documentation are called spam and eggs instead of the traditional foo and bar uh, because of the Monty Python spam sketch. Uh, you should check out Monty Python's flying circus if you haven't already. Cool, uh, that was most of it. Now, uh, this, this is the roadmap for these projects. So a lot of uh, users uh, seem to face issues where uh, they can't install GoScript on their systems because of different uh, operating systems. Uh, so the plan is to remove GoScript and OpenCV altogether. Then there are some performance enhancements that can be done uh, uh, so to, uh, like to extract uh, PDFs that have hundreds of pages. Uh, then uh, since you looked at the web interface, you, uh, like you, you can guess that it's very functional right now. It can be made more nice and beautiful. And we need to add OCR support to uh, get uh, tables out of scanned images and documents. And maybe your favorite feature, uh, if you use these uh, packages, then we should talk afterwards uh, about how you use them. Uh, you can find these packages at uh, these GitHub repos. Uh, if, uh, like, again, if you use them, I, I would uh, like really appreciate if you uh, would do donate your time by contributing back to these repos. And so uh, we are also doing a Camelot and Excalibur dev sprint on 14th and 15th. Uh, so if you're around, just uh, like come off. Uh, there's also Hacktoberfest going on. So if you open four pull requests on any open source repo, you'll get a t-shirt. And I won't give that t-shirt, but like, the companies that are organizing the Oktoberfest will. And you can find the slides afterwards uh, at these links, and uh, I, like, I'll be happy to answer some questions now. Thank you.
Is this one? Yeah. Thanks. That was an excellent presentation. We actually do a lot of that and we face uh, similar… Uh, you're not very audible. Hello? Yeah. Yeah. So we face similar problems. We actually do a lot of that. So I'm going to go ahead to my room and <laughs> try this out. A uh, couple of thoughts. Uh, what if the tables are non-regular, like one has… The first row has four columns, the second one has two columns, like you're doing a call span. Uh, you mean the cells are spanning across multiple yes, columns? Yes. Uh, the, if there are lines on that table, then uh, the library will rec uh, recognize it very nicely and uh, you will be able to, uh, uh, like the library would recognize the spanning cells and put the data in such a way that you can copy it over those spanning cells so that it's easy for you. Uh, okay, yeah. that makes sense. Uh, second question, if I may. Uh, is uh, uh, somewhat of your thoughts on OCR because the OCR will get the text. That's quite possible now, English text at least. <laughs> but not the table structure, I don't think. Uh, not the tables. As in the lines. And yeah, the lines, uh, like if we add OCR support, uh, we'll still get the lines out using half trans uh, yeah. morphological yeah. transforms from OpenCV. Yeah. But we'll do OCR to get the text out actually and then uh, uh, like assign that text in different table cells that were recognized on a page. Okay, have so you done any work on that? Maybe we should take this offline. Oh done? yeah, we should totally yeah. take that off. Yeah, one question here. Yeah. So, um, do you know any limitations today, you know, like I know there are different type of tables that we really extract out of these PDF formats. Yeah. So, are there any known limitations at this point of time which is not going to work? Uh, you mean the limitations that yeah, I've uh, which seen? already you know. Yeah. So, like most of the time, if the, your PDF is text-based and the two Unicode map inside your PDF is correct, the library should be able to get your data out using some parameters or without using them. But there are cases where the encoding inside a PDF is broken. So you might actually see fonts that look like English, that looks like English, but it actually it has garbage inside it because the map is incorrect. And then again, uh, scanned documents uh, are again a limitation right now. Yeah. Any more questions? I, I do have one question. Uh, so you mentioned distributed workloads using Celery. What was that for? I'm here. Oh yeah. Hi. I, <laughs> yeah. Just wanted to understand a little bit more about the distributed workloads uh, point that you made. Uh, what does it mean uh, in this context? Okay, um, so by default it uses multiprocessing uh, to uh, like start those async jobs uh, if you're not using uh, like Celery or, but uh, there's something called an Excalibur.cfg which is a file that you can modify uh, with maybe your, uh, the uh, URL to your RabbitMQ queue okay. and then you can uh, uh, start an Excalibur web server and an Excalibur worker okay. that will make it distributed. So a single PDF you're trying to distribute and process yeah. it. Uh, so yeah. each page will each become page. a job, an extraction job. Okay, yeah. run in parallel. And yeah. And it's what was the plan for moving away from GoScript and OpenCV? What's the tentative? Yeah, so uh, that is still, still a very okay. shady area. Like we still uh, Explore. need to like uh, talk more about how to do that. Okay. Yeah. okay. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Hello. Oh, sorry, here. Uh, uh, so, hey. yeah. Good evening. Yeah. Um, I'm, I mean, uh, I've just done a project right now, uh, like few months ago. I was passing a resume um, project. That was a parser project. So in that, the other formats were also there, like RTF or document format or anything of that stuff. So we were able to extract the data from uh, those kind of formats. But uh, when it came to PDF, it was very difficult for us to, uh, you know, extract data from a PDF file. So uh, you mentioned in your slide, right, that PDF uh, minor, uh, yeah. you know, uh, library. Mm -hmm. So we had installed that, but uh, it was like kind of, uh, it was showing some versioning uh, problem because of which we could not uh, actually utilize the proper, um, you know, thing of that uh, PDF minor. So can you mm -hmm. give us a, some solution like um, how can it be done? Um, so, f if you're using Python 3, you will have to install PDF minor.6, uh, which uh, is uh, Python 3 compatible. The earlier PDF minor has stopped its development is, and is, I think, can only be used in Python 2. Yeah. Uh, maybe we can take this offline. Yeah. Uh, I have another question. Here. Oh, here. Uh, so, when you are giving the report after extracting your table, yeah. how are you exactly calculating the accuracy? 
Okay. So PDF miner would give you the text strings that were found on the page use, uh, in their bounding boxes, and then Camelot will recognize the table grid. In, uh, like, and while assigning those text strings into each cell, it'll uh, like look into how much that text box overlaps uh, with the uh, boundary of that cell. So if it uh, like the more it lies out, the uh, like the less the accuracy will be, and the more it lies inside the cell, it, the more the, your accuracy. Yeah, hi, over here. Yeah. So uh, you mentioned at the beginning of your talk that one of the motivations for you to make this tool was that otherwise you would have uh, a I'm very... You're not audible. Uh, is it better now? Yeah. Yeah. So I said that at the beginning of your talk, you mentioned that your motivation for building Camelot was that otherwise your extraction um, pipeline would be very convoluted with too many steps. Hmm. So um, my question is that, uh, I mean, so I'm doing a, a text mining project and therein again I have to extract PDFs, but I don't always have to extract uh, tables. So does Camelot support non-table related um, uh, extraction as well or uh, what, what would be your recommended workflow for when uh, there will be tables but not always? I didn't get the last part. Uh, what like, does I mean, it support? I will have to extract tables from PDFs but not on all pages. So there will be a lot of pages where I, on, I only need texts and images. So does uh, Camelot support that out of box or do you expect it to be run with another tool? Mm, uh, uh, if I got the question right, you're asking if they, if there are images on different pages, then does Camelot recognize those images? No, my question is if Camelot, uh, if, if uh, Camelot only does tables or it does text recognition, and on top of that, it uh, uh, detects so tables and text. So mostly it does tables, but you can also use it to extract paragraphs and other types of things. But a P PDF miner would be a better library to use uh, if you're not extracting tables. Um, cool. Uh, so uh, I had two questions basically. The first one is uh, using Camelot, uh, you are basically using the lines to make the tables, right? So what if a table doesn't contain lines at all, like just a table without, say, lines in between? Yeah. How would you classify it using Camelot in that case? Uh, Second question being about the two flavors you mentioned, lattice and stream. Um, I'd like some clarification on what kind of differences they have and how to use them. Thank you. Um, so, for the first question, you'll, uh, if the table is not uh, constructed using lines and it's simulated using spaces, then you'll have to use a stream uh, flavor, which, is, uh, which implements uh, the numinance algorithm, which is like a paper uh, from the 2000s, and it like, basically tries to guess a table structure on a PDF page which, on, uh, on a PDF page which doesn't have lines. And uh, like uh, like I to, uh, like mentioned earlier, lattice uh, should be used when there are lines on a table, and stream should be used when a uh, uh, table is simulated using spaces. I think uh, that should be all of it. Uh, we can totally discuss this afterwards. Uh, like you can catch me later. Like I'm also like by the way, I'm also doing a Pi Data Bangalore poster presentation in 4:15 p.m. So if you want more information about that, then uh, you can catch me there too. Thank you.